Hi, I'm Jeff St. John, Senior Editor of Smart Grid with Green Tech Media. We're here at the Network Grid 2013 conference with Mike Edmonds. Mike is Vice President of Strategic Solutions for SNC Electric Company. So my first question is, how would you characterize key developments in the Smart Grid over the past year? We've seen more uh, deployments, uh, very targeted deployments of distribution, automation, and VoltVar. I think what we've seen, a uh, part of that's been driven by business cases. So a lot of uh, utilities now especially are really looking into more of the business case side for where they apply the technology. Uh, so that's starting to drive some of those types of applications. What are some of the key differences in reliability standards and regulations in different parts of the world? So if we look around the globe, there are multiple thresholds for when to record there's an outage. Now, there are some jurisdictions in both in North America where if it's a storm, you can declare that you don't need to record that outage. Um, so if you had a three or four day outage because a storm came through and took all the power lines down, that actually wouldn't count necessarily for your outage minutes. The challenge is what is a threshold to record an outage? So if you go to Canada, it's one minute before you have to record an outage. The majority of the United States is five minutes. So there's a, a huge difference just there. Now, of course, if you are not recording between one and five minutes and you try to benchmark those grids against each other, you're going to get some impressions that you could be more reliable than you actually are. Now, to the costs, what does that mean? If you go to Singapore, average outage for the year is 37 seconds. Now, when you can compare that, we congratulate ourselves. We have an average outage in some states of just two or three hours. You know, those sort of benchmarks and comparisons really start to talk about how reliable is the grid. And of course, a lot of places now use the reliability of the grid to attract new jobs, uh, new industry, and other areas. So if you go to Chattanooga, for example, who have had some in incredible improvements in the reliability with the smart grid they've deployed, they're actually attracting new business to the area because they have a more reliable grid. Mike, you've been doing distribution automation for decades at SNC Electric, but we've seen a lot of new varieties of DA come into the market, including a big focus on using the smart meters that have been deployed to support distribution automation functions. What do you make of this development? Smart meters has a role, absolutely, of outage detection and other power quality issues, and they can definitely be used. Now, we've used that data ourselves, both for a VoltVar uh, scheme to actually understand what the endpoint voltages are, as well as being part of uh, a detection of, of an outage. So that's, that's a good use of it. Now, whether a AMI system can be used for distribution automation, I would certainly question. And the reason I would question that is the, the communication system is being designed for moving from a monthly read, you know, every quarterly read to every maybe 15 minutes. If we really want to have a reliable grid and you've got five minutes or one minute thresholds, you need a system to respond in that time. Along with the AMI um, uh, suppliers is the communications. So we've recently seen a rash of uh, statements that the communication providers are DA providers. And I often analogize that to, in the case of SNC, we actually do supply power to NASA. However, SNC doesn't say we're rocket scientists just because the power goes to NASA. I think from a communication standpoint, you can't say you do distribution automation because the signals go through your radios. It just doesn't really fly. Mike, SNC prides itself on providing self-healing grid systems. Right. Technology that can take action uh, autonomously to fix grid problems. So our system actually talks to each other. It's, it really is a distributed intelligence approach. So they talk to each other. They're always exchanging real-time information of what the currents are, what the voltages are, and what the capacity is left. So when you come to a self-healing event that you have to respond to, the system actually knows which way to, to, to connect to and also knows what loads to shed to make sure you, you stay below a particular threshold. We use a true example of the old grid taking an hour and a half to actually get manually put back together and re-energized, in fact a little bit more than that, that the distributed intelligence can now do in 17 seconds to reheal and reroute power. So that's extremely quick. Now that, is, that doesn't replace the centralized control. That needs to be coordinated with centralized control. And I've actually been in a control room in Texas when a heavy snowstorm went through. And it was interesting to see the operators actually um, worry about the things they needed to worry about in terms of crew core management and others. And actually allowed the distributed intelligence to do its thing, to self-heal automatically. It was one less thing to worry about. So it's how you combine those together and how you get the action to the grid. 
Mike, thanks again for joining us here at the Network Grid 2013. Thank you, Jeff. Always a pleasure talking with you.